Hey YouTube, this is Praxis Prepper, and uh, today I'm going to do a quick little piece on solar ovens. I just saw a Canadian Prepper video about the GoSun solar oven. Uh, it's a kind of a long tubular design, and it kind of gave me the kick in the butt that I've been wanting to do this video for a while, and uh, I figured now would be a good time to share it. Uh, this right here is an oven that I've had for a while. It's an all-American sun oven, and I, I paid for this, and not like an endorser or anything like that, although I am going to endorse it. These are great. Um, I, I've actually got two of these. Um, I found that it was good to have two because if I was making a dish I might want to be cooking two different things, vegetables and then like rice or something. So I got two of them. Very happy with them obviously. These are really nice. Um, they've got a uh, very large interior space in there. I'm not going to touch what's in there but there's a rack that, uh, that pivots so it's always uh, level in there. And um, there's enough sp space in there to make a, you know, a, you know, a family's worth of food. Um, you know, if you're gonna have it all mixed together again, like I said, I, I bought two of them so that I could have, you know, food done separately. Or if I could, I started one thing and then I want to start something else later on. Um, I, I, I just, I was very happy with it, and also redundancy is a good thing with me too. So I like to have, you know, Noah's Ark, two of everything. Um, a lot of space in the American Sun oven, as opposed to the um, the Go the Go Sun one that I saw a Canadian Prepper um, talking about. What's great about this is that uh, you may have leftovers or something like that, and you just have them in like Pyrex or a glass bowl or something like that. I can just take the whole thing, pop it in there, close the door, and I don't have to do anything. It's just it, I, I throw it in, and then when I'm done take it out, everything comes out, and uh, it's really easy having such a large space like that. The way this operates is there's this little um, ceramic handle, goes down, and there's a couple little latches here, and they, uh, you know, you don't need to see what a latch does, but they, two of them flip up and makes a nice vacuum seal. Uh, when it's in good sun, as soon as you do the seal, you hear, because it starts pressurizing uh, with the, you know, the humidity starting to heat up and the air starting to heat up and everything in there. Uh, the average temperature I get with this in full sun in New England uh, is about 300, maybe coming up to 350 degrees. Never seen it any hotter than that, but for cooking food, never needed any higher than that. It's a great temperature for pretty much everything. The other great thing about these is that if you leave the door open a crack, you can do dehydrating. So if uh, in, in the fall, you get uh, you know all, all your greens from the garden and everything like that, you're not going to eat the kale. Uh, it's just it's just too much. Uh, if you don't want to freeze it, you can dehydrate it. So I'll pack this thing, and whew, it sucks the moisture out of it like nothing. I know suck is not the actual uh, literal term. It evaporates it out. But yeah, they, it works really really well. That's another reason why it's good to have two uh, when I'm doing things like that. Ooh, the bugs are starting to come out now. They found me. Um, so this is a great design. It is not the most portable thing in the world. Um, these these fins here, they fold up like that. This guy strapped down here. There's a little suitcase handle down here. You can walk around with it. I mean, you can walk. So I mean, it's portable enough, but you know, I wouldn't want to walk any great distances with it. And I'm certainly not going to go camping uh, with this kind of thing. Um, so it's portable enough. But I would highly recommend these ovens. They're just very versatile. Another one that I have, which I would consider a secondary sort of um, asset, is, is this right here. And I bought this first, parabolic solar cooker. Put your food right here, and I can put my hand right there because there's no sun on it right now. Uh, and when you come, come around the back here, you can you know, aim it and tilt it and do everything with that. The issue that I've had with these is that they are really good but only at one thing. This thing here is really, really good at boiling water. And that's what I use it for all the time. That's why I have it out and it's ready to go. And many times in the morning, uh, I'm looking east right now, so the sun comes up right behind you, hits this first thing in the morning. I can heat up water for coffee or tea or anything like that for people. Um, it's really good at that. Anything else, it is too goddamn hot right at that focal point. It's, it is not an even heat like the sun oven that you saw. The sun oven is great. You can leave your food there, walk away, no big deal. This thing, you, you've got to monitor it. And you also have to pivot it with the sun, much more so than the, uh, the sun oven. The sun oven, you can point roughly south and uh, 
that's going to be fine for you, uh, you know, if you want your food about midday. This thing, yeah, every 20 minutes, 30 minutes, you have to give it a little rotation to kind of chase the sun as it goes across the sky. But this is super fast at uh, heating up hot water, much more fast than the sun oven um, that, that, that I just showed you down there. Were I to take a clump of reasonably dry leaves and pop them right down there, within a second and a half, they'd be bursting into flames. Very hot. In fact, I put a cast iron pot on this once and the, I was, this is before I found out that you really can only do water in these. I was trying to do soup. It burned the bottom of the, uh, it burned the soup to the bottom of the pot and that allowed the pot to get hotter than 212 degrees once it was sort of insulated with this scab of burned soup. And uh, the cast iron pot cracked there because it was just so hot and focused in one area and the rest of it was not expanding as much as that one area. And it, it, it shot a laser through a cast iron pot. Very powerful, very useful, but only for one thing, in my experience, boiling water. Uh, so that's my experience with the, uh, the, the solar cooking. I love it. In fact, my lunch today was cooked with the solar cooker that was a leftover from a party that I had had last week. Um, and all the food for that party was cooked in sun ovens. All the guests came and you know, the sun ovens are out and there's a uh, baked pasta kind of simmering in them. And everyone actually said it was the best baked pasta they'd ever had. But people say that a lot. But I presume it was at least good. Though I doubt it was probably the best that they'd ever had. So definitely something to try out. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Very easy. Throw your stuff in. Leave for the day. You come back as long as they were, you know, reasonably pointed in the right direction. You're going to have a, a great meal. Hot and waiting for you. Definitely try it out. Would highly recommend. Um, and leave your thoughts below. If, have you tried solar cooking? Have you tried any of your own stuff? One thing I've been thinking about doing is building my own big solar oven. Have you done that? Do you have any experience with that? Love to hear your thoughts on that as well. So, I'll see you next time.